this. I'm a volunteer with Tech Goes Home and today I'm going to show you how to order groceries online using Peapod. Uh, this video assumes that you have an account already set up with Peapod and I'm going to walk you through the steps of how to do that. If you don't already have an account, I actually have a separate video for setting up an account before uh, you set up your order for a delivery. So with that said, we're going to start by visiting the Peapod page, www.peapod.com, and clicking on Sign In. So here I'm going to sign in with my username and password. Confirm that I entered that correctly, and I'm going to click Sign In. Once I'm signed in, I see my name here at the top right, and I get brought to the home page where I have the option to shop in a couple different ways. I find the simplest way to find what I'm looking for here is either one, uh, just typing in the name of a product here in the search field at the top or browsing the aisles to look for groceries by category. That way is uh, usually pretty straightforward for me. Uh, you might notice here that there are a couple of notifications. One is on limited product availability. The other is on delivery delays and adjusted store hours. That's actually pretty important to note because uh, given the current situation with uh, the coronavirus and social distancing and stay at home orders in place, uh, the Peapod delivery service is in really high demand right now. So save yourself some time, potentially aggravation, by go ahead and uh, just confirming that they will have a delivery time available to you. So I'm going to do that. Uh, click on uh, select a time here, or I can choose delivery pickup times, whichever option you, you'd like. But we're going to look at the delivery times available and make a selection so that I know by the time I'm done grocery shopping, I will actually have a, a time slot available to receive my order. So when I clicked on that button, it brought up a menu of delivery times with days here on the left and time slots available on the right. So it looks like the soonest available is uh, tomorrow because again, of the high demand. And the time slot that is open here is uh, between 3.30 and 10 p.m. That works for me, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on Select. And you'll note it says here, Selected Time isn't reserved until you check out. That means that while you're shopping, this time is uh, sort of pulled open for you uh, softly. If you were to, say, step away from your computer or your phone and do something else for a couple hours and come back, that time would no longer be available. So uh, make sure when you do sit down to do your shopping, you can kind of get it done all at once so that you can hang on to that uh, delivery slot. So now that it's selected, I can click Continue Shopping. And uh, the screen here is updated with the date and time of the delivery of this order. So now I'm going to go ahead and browse the aisles for some of the items that I'd like to uh, pick up here in my order. So when you do that, <coughs> pardon me, you're brought to an all aisles list, which shows you your basic grocery store uh, item list with uh, everything separated into sections such as produce, meat, seafood, dairy. Looks like they're also delivering alcoholic beverages, uh, cleaning supplies, pet supplies, whatever you need. So there's lots here. So I'm just going to start here in the produce section. And after you click an aisle, you'll see that the aisle items are broken out further into uh, different categories. I'm going to start with fruit. And that brings up a list of the fresh fruit items that are available here. It looks like there's 133. And uh, if I want to filter those items more, I can choose uh, to look at just the items that are on sale this week and specials. Um, there's an item to, uh, sorry, an option to look for new foods. I'm assuming that's new to the store, not new as in food that hasn't been returned. I don't think they sold old food that looked bad. 
And you can also filter the items by nutritional details, brands, categories, etc. I'm just going to scroll down the list here and look for the uh, fresh fruit items I know I want. So to um, pick an item, you can read the description here. If it looks fine, go ahead and add that to your cart. If you want to learn more about any one item, you can click on the picture and it will bring up that item's detail. It looks like this lemon is pretty good. It's got a five star rating. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to my cart. Once I do that, I can also click the plus or minus buttons to increase the quantity. So adding an item to your cart has just a single unit. If you want to change that, use these buttons here. You can also see here on the side, they give you other items that you might be interested in. I am going to just continue looking through the list here. So I'm going to close this window for now and keep scrolling. Looks like they've got a sale on grapes. That looks good. Got to have some limes. Got two. Some more delicious apples. Looks like they've got a three pound bag of Granny Smith apples for $4.99, which seems like a pretty good deal as well. So I'm going to add that to my cart. And that's going to do it for fresh fruit. For some other produce items, I'm going to click on the produce aisle again and then choose a different category. This time I'm going to go for some vegetables. So we've got a cucumber, some tomatoes here. Looks like they've got a sale. You can buy two for 61 cents, so I'll add two to my cart. Red onion. And each time I'm adding uh, items to my cart, the total is uh, displayed here in the top right, uh, which is, uh, it's good. It gives you a sense of, or it gives you the total amount for your uh, purchase so far, so that if you need to make adjustments, add or subtract a couple things, you're able to do that. No surprises. Add some garlic, some onions, some lettuce, mushroom, carrots, and some broccoli. And that's going to do it for vegetables. Now I'm going to go back to the all aisles list, pick a different category, see what they have for meat. And when I get to the meat aisle, I see here that there's a note about purchasing limits. It looks as though uh, because of high demand and limited supply, all um, orders are subject to a two meat per category limit. So what I'm assuming that means is I can buy uh, two uh, beef items, two chicken items, two pork items, no more than two though of any, of, of any single meat category just because of uh, concerns about supply. So I'm going to start with beef. I can scroll down the list here and see what's available. Looks like they've got some steak. And some lean ground beef. So I'm going to add that to my cart. And that's going to do it for uh, my uh, beef purchase based on the limits. So now that that's done, I can go back to the meat aisle and do a search for chicken. I can see there's 123 uh, chicken products here. I'm looking specifically for drumsticks, so I'm going to click on that category from the menu. Scroll down to see what's available. I think that's all they have for chicken thighs. So I'm going to close out of that and go back to the all aisles list again. Oops. and keep scrolling. So now I'm in the dairy aisle. I'm looking for milk, so I'm going to click on that category of dairy. There's 92 items here. I'm going to scroll down to look for 
my specific color milk that I want. I see it's on sale, that's great. I'm gonna grab two. I'm done with dairy. I can go back up to the all aisles again. Look again for a different aisle. This time I'm gonna find bread. I'm looking for bakery bread. So that's a category. I'm just gonna click on that. And let's see the available items here. Be white and multi grain. Okay, so that's probably gonna do it for my order. It looks like I'm at $74.32, which is fine. So I'm gonna click on the checkout button here. And it's gonna show me all the items in my cart. I can look and uh, just confirm that I have the quantities and the exact items that I want. If I do decide to remove an item from, uh, from my cart here, I can do so by clicking on this, uh, this garbage can shape icon here and that'll remove it from my list. I get the option to remove it. I do want those tomatoes, so I'm gonna hit cancel. But if I didn't, I could hit okay and it would remove it from my list. So all this looks correct. My org information shows uh, my subtitle for my product and the 9.95 delivery fee. And it uh, looks like that's gonna be $84.27 before tax and tip. So I'm gonna click checkout. So since I haven't entered in my, my payment information, I would be prompted to do so here. I'd have uh, entered my credit card number, the expiration date, security code, and the name on my card. And assuming that my delivery and billing address are the same, I would click save. If it's different, if you have a different address for your credit card, you can always uncheck that button and just add that information here. Once you do that, you can click save. I'm gonna close out of this. And uh, normally what would happen after you save your information, you would be shown a, an order summary with uh, all of your products and your payment info as well. Um, if that ever doesn't happen, and especially in this case where it didn't happen because I didn't enter my payment info, I'm gonna, just gonna click on that button again, on the checkout button here on the top right. I would see order summary here with the items that I purchased, my order information, and in this uh, white space here that's underneath the order information, I would see my credit card info, which would probably be just the last four digits of my credit card number and the delivery address. There's also usually an option to add a tip for the driver, which goes a long way now for the um, essential workers who are working really hard to make sure that people are able to get the food that they need with a uh, reduced risk during the uh, coronavirus situation we have right now. So uh, assuming all that information looked correct to me, I didn't need to update anything. The uh, checkout button here that you see for cart would actually be replaced by a green place order button. So when I was ready, I would click the place order button and just await my uh, confirmation page with the information on my delivery time and the total cost that I'll, I'll be charged. That uh, information is usually available. You can print that page out. There's a print button here in the corner for, um, for your personal records as well. So that's about it for uh, this video. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, if you are new to Peapod and you don't have an account set up, there should be a video available for uh, the process of walking through setting up an account for the very first time. So check that out if you're interested and um, stay tuned for more helpful videos from Tech Goes Home. Thank you.